Hello, glory be to God for today. Welcome to a Healy's talk show program. Vivid view. See and do it. No grief for anybody. Say something, somebody. My name is Moose Mark David. No grief for anybody. I believe is uh, one that tells us not to give up despite the situation of life. It is something that tells us to defy all odds positively to survive. Thank you. My name is Moses Chibukadibia Moose. For me, the word um, no grief for anybody is a balance that charges anyone that's want to take a positive step to remain stubborn at achieving it and defy all us that want to stop you and break into your desired future. Thank you. My name is Ode Dirogbeiro. No grief for anybody. To me, I believe it means don't allow someone to cheat you and don't be don't allow someone to bully you, like threatening you. So you have to know your rights as a citizen of Nigeria. Thank you so much for your contributions. No grief for anybody. Actually, um, positive side and also negative side, which is also the answer that uh, my friends gave. You know, when we say no grief for anybody, let it not be a negative side. Because if you go against the law of the land, the uniform men will go after you. But when you are, when you are right, it's being infringed on. For instance, they have already Commissioner of Police has announced or IG that no young man should be searched their phones or laptop in the car or anywhere. And then suddenly three policemen stops you and say, bring your phone or bring your I I iPad. You can just tell them, but this is this is not right. You're not supposed to search me. But if you discover that they are number you first and foremost, all you need to do is to just see apply wisdom, even in fighting for that, you're right. Apply wisdom, look at the the the, the plate on their, their names here. Memorize one person or two names because they will allow you to even use your phone. And then make report if you want to do that, if you want to see fight for that, you know, for that. You make report at the appropriate time. Perhaps you contact these human fighters or even your 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 lawyer. Then for the neg for the positive side of it, what he said, you have already put your hand on what to do. Do not give up. Just follow it. Follow your heart to be able to achieve and to, and to also to survive in this planet Earth. So it's actually in two ways, the negative side and also the positive. But I'm asking you to do that in, in positive side so as, a, as a youth. So enough for this for now. We'll continue with our program for the day. Loss of lamentation and regrets from those who depend solely on one source of income, either as an individual or as a country. The topic for today's discussion is diversification as a source of survival. The guests will be introduced shortly after this break. Please don't go away. Vivid view. Save and do it. Welcome back. In case you're just joining us, the topic again is diversification as a source of survival. And with me in the studio is a public affair analyst. Let's make welcome to Lani Ujuri. Vivid view. Say and do it. Good. Before discussion proper, please follow us on social media handles are displayed on the screen. Ujuri, you're welcome again. Thank you very much. And we just go straight to your perspective on the subject matter. Well, um, the Nigerian economy as it is, is mostly dependent on crude oil. About 98% of our foreign income is from crude oil. And we can't go on like this. So far, so good. It's been years back. And even as at now, the income from crude oil, we, we cannot meet our refining capacity. We can't even meet our OPEC quota. And the way it is, we are, since we don't even have anything generating enough foreign exchange for us, it is, that's just the next way to go to diversify our economy. And there are a lot of I mean, potentials in our land. We have very arable land. We have really um, young people who are ready to work if the environment is right. So it's just for the government to sit down meet the people at a common point and look for the way forward not even for now we need to plan 
for the next five years, for the next 10 years. Ten years. The world over, um, European Union, the US, even Saudi Arabia, who happens to be one of the largest producers of crude oil, they are moving their economy towards green economy. So what are we doing? We are not even there yet. We're not even talking about it yet. Greenhouse emission and all that. So we need to sit down. We, it's not something we get done today and we start tomorrow. Um, we, we need to plan for our children. Strategically. For mm -hmm. our children's yeah. children. Um, if you now look at it now, we are not even talking about the areas of agriculture. We are not talking about, if you're talking about manufacturing now, oh, we're looking for investors. Investors who are coming to do what exactly? Investors who are coming to use what kind of energy? We still have gas flaring in the oil producing areas. We've not even done anything about that. So we need to know what exactly the situation is. One thing we need to realize is, as a people, we need to engage people in government. We can't just sit back and say, oh, okay, they are in government and we do nothing about it. It is not just about them. It's about us. We are doing it here now. The conversation has started on this platform. Yeah. By the time one, two, three, four, five people start talking about it, the people in government, um, it, uh, every, and let me just point it out here, out here that not everything goes over to Asorok. No, mm -hmm. we start from our CDAs. We start from our uh, local government areas. Mm -hmm. And we need to point it, oh, um, it's not a, big, not a big deal. It is a big deal. Apart from the fact that we need to look for other means of income, the kind of carbon emission we are having is killing us. If you look at the database, which we are not so big on, check, we have more cases of cancer now. So what we have as the mainstay of our economy is killing us. It's not even bringing us enough money. So we need to be focused on, okay, what are they doing in other climes? What are they doing in other economies? Mind you, all these other economies too, the US, they have crude oil. Um, Saudi Arabia, they have crude oil. They are all moving away from crude oil. Yes, it's not immediately. And the earlier we start doing this, the better. better for everyone. It's the better for everyone. <laughs> Another thing we need to start looking at is non-physical means of making money, of making this, I mean, of getting foreign exchange into our countries. Um, if you look out there now, or countries like India, most things IT is in that direction. If we now focus on, oh, okay, we have very, very young people who have, who have this um, wherewithal, who have the intellect to go in there, even if it's just software, even if it's apps, if we so focus many. on these things, we definitely would get there. Like I keep saying, it is not something we get the results now. In the next 48 months, in the next five years, in the okay. next 10 years, so that we won't just sit down. Because even the crude oil we keep talking about, a time will come that there won't be demand for it anymore. So <laughs> the earlier we start looking at our mineral resources in different parts of the country, that is one way. Our IT potentials, that is another, another means way. in which we can diverse. I mean, diversify our economy into, and we will make tons of money out of these things. It's not just. Thank you so much for, for the, the good opening Grant is just giving to us because the all our conversation is going to boil down on what we have just said. There's need for every country to diversify. You know, looking at like my opening, looking at just one source of uh, income, this crude oil you just mentioned is not really enough for us. But sometimes people will say Nigeria is the giant of of, uh, of the African, uh, uh, you know, community. So why should we diversify? Well, <laughs> <laughs> anybody telling us that we're a giant of Africa, they're just making a mockery of us. That statement for me, anybody saying that, if, if, mind you, even if it's a foreigner telling you that, you're not making a mockery of us. So look at the indices. We are not the largest producer of crude oil in Africa. We are not. We are like number two or number three. It keeps going number two, number three. You have other countries in Africa who are producing much, much oil than us. Um, we can't even meet... But we have the population. No, how yes. many are we? Uh, 
over 200 million. Degrees. No, over. <laughs> we, we need to start. Yeah, there's a problem. Yes, we have a challenge. The earlier we start addressing this issue, mm -hmm. the better for us. It is not just about the government. In this studio now, the lady at the door can tell, oh, in this studio, we have 50 people. Mm -hmm. If you're going to make provision for food and water, you'll make for 50 people. Mm -hmm. The population you mentioned, the last census we had was about 2007 or thereabout. So even the government, they don't have the data. Number, of, yeah. or the, so they don't even know how many people they are planning for. The earlier we start that from- So as, over 200 million, just a guesswork. Just a guesswork. <laughs> How many people? And, and, and what I bring this question is that, you know, some people always say Nigeria is giant of Africa. To some extent, I agree. But then we have a lot that we'll have done to make us really be giant of Africa. That's exactly what you're saying now. In economic words, where, where are we giant of, of, of Africa? <laughs> Africa, you know, only just that population there. And, and, and that's it. So people should not rely on that. Okay, we are, we are big. We need to do, really do something to show the world truly that we are the giant of African community. So that's we, one, yeah. Yeah, well, we have the numbers. Yeah. We have the resources. Mm -hmm. But the number and the resources, they are not meeting Maybe. at a common point. And even the resources we have is not properly managed. It's not properly managed. Yeah. The government can't tell you in this area, mm -hmm. this is the amount of mineral resources we have. In this area, this is the amount of mineral resources. You try and probably try to set up something, not even somebody coming from outside, oh. in your neighborhood mm -hmm. and try to get the database or try to get, oh, I'm going to my village. In, in the, even in, in the Southwest, some areas you have gold, in yeah. raw gold and yeah. all that. Yeah. Can you please tell me in what quantity do we have raw gold here? What, what are the potentials? All you get is maybe the ballet in that neighborhood or maybe it's, uh, one hunter will be the one telling you, well, it's yeah, possible we have yeah. it here. We need to get our numbers right. Mm -hmm. The, I mean, we, we need to get, okay, um, the population, mm -hmm. the mineral resources. If you ask now, oh, income per capita, what are the indices? <laughs> you just get figures from you from here from and different, there. Different places. The yeah, challenge we have is because we are here, we are in the, um, we are in metropolitan areas. Mm -hmm. We can and, and people keep moving towards those points, Lagos, Kano, Abuja, we don't know. And because we are able to get up every day, get food to eat, move around, we can't really tell. A time will come that it's really, it's biting hard now. It will still bite harder, but we need to get to, at this point, get a solution. Get the solution. Mm. It is not just, I keep saying, it is not just the government. Mm. It has to do with it us. Not, the that fact that we are getting yeah. by does not mean we will keep on getting by. We won't be able to do that for All right. Thank you so much. It's time for a break now. Vivid View. Sit and do it. Welcome back. We are still discussing diversification as a source of survival. And uh, thank you so much because we have already started the, the discussion. What every Nigerian that needs to survive, what do you, you, you think should be the mindset? Cut, <laughs> cut, cut the um, overhead, the things that are not really necessary, mm. cut it off. Cut it off in the means of, okay, you're looking at leisure, you're looking at some kind of clothes that you, you don't need for your everyday use, mm. some trips that you don't need to make, oh, I want to go to um, up country, I want to go to my village like two, three times in a year. You cut it down to once. You cut down some, oh, this person is having a party, there's a party here tomorrow, there's a party there. And when you ask, like, I need to enjoy myself. No, 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 no. <laughs> because even you going to that party, is a cost to you. Yes. They're going to burn fuel. Mm -hmm. They're going to wear your, I mean, you're going to put on clothes in which you have to pay laundry costs for. Just, we, we just need to cut our costs. We need to look at, oh, if you sit down, how much do I spend on laundry? How much do I spend on electricity? How much do I spend on all those things, on fuel? We need to look at those figures. Cut our cost first. Yes, food is very important, number one. Mm -hmm. Shelter, number two. Mm -hmm. those, those, those things definitely are constant. But all other things, we need to bring the cost down. That is number one way of making sure that we keep afloat in a challenging time like this. This syndrome of Japan, do you also think it's a part of it? <laughs> <laughs> The issue of Jaqua that is um, relocating. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I keep telling people that it's not the poor man that is relocating. 
for you to relocate out of Nigeria, you need minimum of 10 million. Exactly. 10 million naira is a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's and if really um I give 10 million to some people in the audience mm -hmm. who have the business acumen, they will roll that money over. Of course. It is just the psyche. We need a reorientation. I'm not saying the country is not tough. Yeah. It is tough. Running a business here now, it is very, very, very tough. tough. Yeah, yes. That's true. But our government too should meet the people at a point. We have this problem. This is where I'm taking you. If a mother and father talks to their children, hey, um, you cannot go to this school for this session and next session. This is what, from instead of eating two pieces of meat, we're going to eat one. And you notice that when I, I, they keep eating two, three, four. Mm -hmm. Of course, you will lose faith. So if the government is really ready to meet people and they are very sincere, people will stay back and work for their country. Exactly. Other economies that have been in worse situation and they've been able to bounce back mm -hmm. was because they bought into the Nigerian dream. What is the Nigerian dream? You can't tell me. I don't. I don't. You don't see any. But we need to have the dream. Something we are looking forward in the next five, ten, twenty years. And if we do that, we will get better results than relocating abroad. Because that relocating abroad is actually um, costing a lot in Nigeria. We have those are the human resources we have that's supposed to even work here, make their input in our nation. Well, because of the situation, some of them really uh, find their way out and then contributing to the economy, growing the economy of where they are, they, they, they are staying. You got some of our youth, um, most of them are actually in, in Canada, yes. contributing to the economy of Canada and all that because they pay tax and other bills, you know, which will also increase our own economy here. But I know we stand and say there are some current economic, you know, realities in our country. Can you just mention some of them? As you sit down here now, we, we all know that it took us much more to get here this morning. <laughs> fuel, is, fuel is scarce. And even when you find it, it is not the price it used to be last week. And we both know, we don't, we don't need to be told. Yeah. We don't need to be told that it would keep increasing. And as you move up country, hmm. the prices are going up. Hmm. So naturally, people there will find life a bit tougher. And they keep moving down here. They keep moving down south where they think oh okay uh, lagos kano abuja and where they think oh and well things are happening things are happening <laughs> and all that and it puts pressure housing infrastructure and all that on me and you so it's it's tough and it's possible it gets tougher uh, palliative will not solve the problem for them and the earlier we start um moving towards Yes, this is what is next for us to do. That is what is ne next for us to do. The reality for us is we don't have foreign exchange, means of and foreign our, exchange. Our Naira that has we don't, we don't, we don't have means of foreign exchange. So for us as a people, as an individual, as corporate bodies, we, don't, we need to start looking for things we're going to do, either business or services, that would earn us foreign exchange. That's the truth. Because for every amount of money you have now. I have a million that last week, that million, that one million had lost value as I'm sitting down of here course, of now. Course. So, but if I'm earning a hundred dollars every, every week, definitely I earn more income because I'm earning foreign exchange as I'm earning the government to definitely, no matter how many the taxes, they're earning something from the cost of um, transaction. So that is just the way for us to go. And the government definitely should stimulate the economy in this direction. Foreign exchange earning is the way to go, either for individuals or for corporate body. Because it's like now that we are, we are trying to like, um, we are in a room, we are grouping in the dark, even the people lead, I mean, the people at the helm of affairs in the financial industry, they are like trial and error, let's do this, let's do that. It is tough. We are not earning enough foreign exchange. We should, as individuals, there are legitimate means of earning I'm not talking about um, Yahoo, Yahoo or, or internet fraud. No, they are they are legitimate means of earning exports. We have raw materials. I mean that we could. I mean we could export. We have um, information technology things that we could do that would earn us foreign exchange. Mm. All those things we should start looking in. The, we call, we all carry mobile phones for crying out loud. We should look at content creation. You put up something. People do 
all sorts of things. We just need to pay attention. There are people out there who are looking for information about Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Ordinary you recording, going out, recording the realities, all these uh, media platforms, they pay you money for all these things. So we should look in that, um, in that direction yes. and not wait till the hammer meets us on our toes. You know, like we said, this, this program is actually for the youths. I hope uh, they are getting something now. This is not a time to fold your hands and uh, say, no, no, this is what I'm going to do. Try as much as you can. If you have something to do, try next. What else should I do to add to, uh, add to this so that I can earn more income? That is the sense of diversification. If you just say, okay, I have a barbie saloon, and you remain in that barbie saloon, we can think of, okay, some people that come to barbie here may, may need some cold water, some cold drinks. Let me get a refrigerator by the side. As they come, they can take. You have already diversified. You, you get small money for your barbie. You also get little money from that. So I think youths should think of, they're not just one way now, because where we are going to, where do we pray that it will, it will be better? And I believe so. We'll take a break now. Vivi view. Save and good. Welcome back. See, discussing diversification as a source of survival. And uh, we, 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 we're making progress in our, in our discussion. Well, that will take me now to so say, how then do we excel in this growing economy? Well, um, one of the things that is a plus for us now is information technology, the internet at come of age. And I've noticed that things are not... Um, the way I've never been to, let me give an example. <laughs> I've never been to trade fair before. Mm -hmm. And I know the number of things I've bought from trade fair. And um, someone was saying last week that, oh, some people from the, some parts of the country, they are always doing um, fetish things to make sure that they sell. And I said, it's not true. <laughs> 